Hey everybody, we're into a brand new topic now. This is the, the unit called Electricity and Magnetism, or E and M, is how we'll usually uh, abbreviate that. Uh, electricity and Magnetism really is all about charges and how charges are positioned and how charges move and what causes charges to move and um, and really, every, everything comes down to this idea of charge. So we'll start very basically on this with something that you probably are familiar with already, just the different types of charges. So charge is a, uh, it's a characteristic of matter, just like, uh, like mass is a characteristic of, of matter. Um, so some objects have um, charge, some do not have charge. Now, a little bit different from mass, is that uh, there are two different types of charges. As far as we know, there's only one type of mass. You either have mass or you don't have mass. Um, but uh, charges, we have two different types. We have what have been uh, decided to be called uh, positive and negative charges. So for this, uh, this video, we'll use blue to represent negative, and we'll use red for the positives. OK, now. Um, using positive and negative here, there's really no no reason that we have to call the, the two uh, types of charges positive and negative, um, but it, it works out really nicely mathematically. Um, so when we multiply two negatives together, or when we multiply two positives together, we get a positive product either way. And that works really nicely when we're getting into calculations with charges, particularly with forces caused by charges. Uh, we call these electric forces. Um, so something that uh, that you would have learned before in, in chemistry or physical science or um, you know, maybe even earlier is the idea that opposites attract. Now you may have seen that with magnets before, um, or I would think you've seen that with magnets. Uh, I'm not sure if you would have seen that with charges already, probably, but opposites attract. That means that uh, if we have a negative and a positive that are uh, close together like these two, they're going to each experience this force toward each other. And they each experience the same size force, not drawn especially well here, but the same size force. And in opposite directions, these two forces make up a Newton's third law pair. So each mass, uh, or sorry, each, each charged object here experiences a, um, uh, a force toward each other that's equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. Now those are opposite charges. We have one positive and one negative, so those are attractive to each other. Uh, but if we had, say, two negatives, then those would be repelling each other. So we have a force away from one another, and I made this a little bit too big. Let's zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Okay, so these two are repelling each other. Again, same size force, opposite direction. And if we had two positive charges near each other, we again would have repulsion. Okay, so these two are a Newton's third law pair as well. So same size force, opposite direction. Now the amount of force there is going to vary with the distance between these objects, whether they're close together or far apart. It's also going to vary with the, uh, the amount of charge. So if it's a large positive charge or a large negative charge, that will influence um, uh, you know, how big these forces are. Now, uh, when, when we start talking about actual objects, um, objects are composed of many, many charges. And so it's not just single um, charges like we've shown here. You have one big negative charge is brought close to one big positive charge. Things are actually made of, of many, many, many charges. Um, mostly what we're talking about here is protons and electrons. Electrons being negatively charged, protons being positively charged. Uh, neutrons are, well, uncharged particles. And if we look at just most objects most of the time in most places under most circumstances, most things are neutrally charged. Most large objects are neutrally charged. Now that's not the same as being like a neutron, which has no charge. When we say something is neutrally charged, we just mean 
that it looks like this, where it has lots of positive charges and lots of negative charges, but roughly the same number of each, and they're pretty evenly distributed. So this is a neutrally charged object. Lots of charges. It's not zero charges present here, just evenly spread. Now if we take an object like that, we can do something called polarizing the object. The object will still have a net charge or an overall charge of zero. What we're going to do though is move these charges around so we might experience some electric forces here that, that don't get balanced out by the opposite charges. So this process is called polarization. This is where we, we move positive charges one way, negative charges another way, and so we end up with sort of this, uh, almost like a magnet, which has a north side and a south side, or a north pole and a south pole. Um, so you might have heard about polarization or, or polarized uh, molecules, or polar molecules is how it's usually phrased. Um, so water is an example of a polar molecule. So water is just, it's always polar, meaning that um, the positive charges are more on one side and the negative charges are more on the other. So this is a water molecule and it has that kind of funny shape where the two hydrogens are both on the same side of the oxygen molecule, or oxygen atom rather. Um, if we looked at the distribution of electrons around this, what we'd find is that well, we know there's electrons being shared between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and this oxygen, or this, this hydrogen and the oxygen. Uh, and so you, know, you might think of these uh, electrons as being like you know, halfway between each of those, and then there's you know, a couple extra electrons over on this side as well um, that, uh, that aren't being shared. But what happens with, um, with water is it's not actually an even share that oxygen is a little better at pulling on these electrons than the hydrogen is. So we get, you know, the electrons end up being a little bit closer to the oxygen, and the hydrogens are kind of off on their own. Um, now hydrogen is normally just one proton and one electron. So if the electron that it's sharing with the oxygen is you know, still with the hydrogen, but it's mostly over with the oxygen, and basically we've got a positive charge over here, kind of separated from the negative charges. And then with this hydrogen, another positive charge, kind of separated from the negative charges. So we end up with positive more on this side and negative more on this side. Now we know that it's, it's actually a more complicated picture than this. Um, electrons don't behave like discrete particles, they behave like kind of a cloud of possible locations for these particles. It's, it's very complex, but um, you know, basically if we, if we drew a cloud kind of shape where these electrons might be located, what we find is that more often than not they're going to be closer to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogen. Now they may be over here on the other side of the hydrogen at, uh, at some instant in time, but more of the time they're going to be closer to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogen. And then oxygen, it has these uh, electrons around it as well. And, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of going around. They're basically not affected by these hydrogens, or not, not heavily influenced by the hydrogens. Um, so you know, those are the, the electrons that are not being shared. But the ones that are being shared, you know, they, they tend to be more in this area that's a little closer to the oxygen. So we get more of our negative charges over this side, more of our positive charges over on this side. So now if I came in and brought, say, a big positive charge, whatever that is, so I, you know, a collection of protons that I stuck together, uh, bring, bring this big positive charge over here, that is going to repel the positive charges here and attract the negative charge. Now if our water molecule is going to keep its current orientation, the positive charges here are closer to this positive charge, so that's a pretty big um, repelling force. And this negative charge from the oxygen, it's a little farther away, so that's an attractive force pulling the oxygen over here, but it's not as big as this repelling force on the two hydrogens. 
So you know, overall, this this would experience a uh, uh, you know a force away from this big positive charge. What's probably going to happen uh, on on this is this whole molecule would end up spinning around so that the negative side is closer to this big positive charge, and these two positive ends they're farther away from the big positive charge. And this is actually part of the dissolving process is these um, water molecules spinning around and, and lining up opposite charges uh, with, uh, with the, the matter that it's dissolving. Uh, but that's a topic for another case. Now, water is a molecule that's it's always polar. But we can take any object and polarize it. So let's say we go back to this, this neutrally charged piece of matter, and I put that big positive charge close to it. So now all of these positive charges in here, they're feeling this repulsive force, pushing them away. And so they all end up moving over this way as, as much as they're able to. Now that'll depend on the, the kind of uh, material that we're talking about. You know, some materials, these charges are able to move more, and some they're not able to move very much. Uh, the negative charges, the electrons, will tend to do more moving. Uh, now those negative charges, they're all experiencing an attractive force. So they all get pulled over to this side. And again, you know, the amount that they're able to move, that'll kind of vary depending on the material. Um, when electrons are able to move, when charges are able to move really easily, um, we call that material a conductor of electricity. And so if this is a conductor, we'd see a lot of movement mainly from these electrons. The protons, they, they pretty much stay where they are. Um, but we see this net movement of electrons over in this direction. And so we end up with a higher concentration of electrons over here than we have of protons. Still the same number of electrons as protons throughout this material. So this whole piece is not charged, it's neutral. Uh, but because of that uneven charge distribution, where we have more negatives over here and more positives over here, this positive charge and this neutrally charged object, they're actually going to be attracted to each other. So we get this attractive force. Oops, I did the wrong color, but you get the idea. Um, this, this net attractive force between these two pieces. Now you can do this, you can experience this, just by rubbing a balloon on your hair and then sticking it against the wall. And if you get enough of a charge on the balloon, um, you'll find that you're able to stick it onto the wall. Even though the wall is neutral, you haven't done anything to charge up the wall, just bringing this charged balloon close by is going to cause electrons and protons to rearrange a little bit to make the wall polarized, to make it have an uneven charge distribution. Now if these this material is a conductor. These electrons, they're actually going to move quite a bit, probably all the way over to, to this edge of the material. So that's if you're doing like, uh, you know, like a steel wall or something. Steel is a pretty good conductor, or you know, a copper pipe, um, another good conductor. Uh, but uh, just a, a, a typical you know, wood and drywall wall, you know, that's not much of a conductor. But we can still have kind of the same thing we had going on here where our electrons can get pulled to one side or the other of each individual atom. So each atom here is made up of protons and electrons. The electrons would get shifted over to the left side of each individual atom. And so again, we have this net effect that you know, there's more electrons over this way and more protons over in this direction. So we get this overall interaction, this attractive force between the positives and the negatives. There's a repulsive force between the positives and the positives as well, but since those are a little farther apart, it's going to be a weaker force. So overall, we get this attractive force between the two. Now, one thing we can do um, that's kind of cool with these is called charging by induction. So we can actually, this object have a non-zero overall force just by connecting this to what we'll call ground. And we're going to come back to that and talk about it a little bit later.